Socialism is supposed to be something that the left supports and that right liberals abhor. But when you look at the world around you, socialism is alive and well and aided by both the left and right, but for different reasons. Left liberals support socialism because it's the only economic form that can possibly support the society they want. They want a large government and numerous autonomous individuals. The autonomous individuals will go about their business when they cannot support themselves or left liberalism thinks they, can, they need help, whether they do or don't, then the government can provide them with that support. But what possible reason could right liberals have to support socialism? Well, what right liberals support is free trade and open borders, which seems to be the opposite of socialism. But the difference between the left and the right is how big they are thinking. Left liberals are mostly thinking in terms of countries or megastates like the European Union, but right liberals are thinking of the entire world. If right liberalism was supreme, what would it want? It would want trade between countries to be unrestricted, for the flow of workers to be unrestricted, and for the transfer of money to be unrestricted. But in the real world, people in different countries have different standards of living, different wages, and different conditions of work. But if things are to be unrestricted, then those things cause problems. The different standards mean that the economy is uneven, the world economy. And if the world economy is uneven, that creates problems. It creates opportunities as well. But if that was the goal of right liberalism, they wouldn't support everything being unrestricted. No. The world economy must be equalised. It must be just as easy to do business in China as in Canada. Not different rules and conditions, but sameness. This sameness has a name, factor price equalisation. And what it says is that when countries trade with each other, wages and prices will equalise. Maybe not exactly, but they move closer together. The reason is because the two countries are now part of the same market and they are operating in direct competition with each other. So the high wages in one country will go down and the low wages in another will rise. The same will occur with prices. Now this is a nice rational idea and it even sounds fair. Why would a traditionalist oppose it? We oppose it because it isn't rational and it sure isn't nice. This is socialism. And all socialism believes in levelling, in removing distinctiveness and in redistributing money. Your money, my money, the taxpayer's money, as if it wasn't our money, but their very own money. But governments don't have their own money. They get their money from us, the taxpayer. Under socialism, whether it is practised by the left or the right, a massive transfer of money takes place from those who have money to those who don't. That transfer takes money from all taxpayers and gives it to people who are not taxpayers, including business. Right liberals control the government, and the government then tells business to do something. Of course, it requires compensation. The fact that it demands compensation for proposals it proposed and supports is besides the point. Wages in rich countries go down, and those in poor countries rise. That's good for those in poor countries, as long as they are in the industries that get good wages, but it's bad for everyone else. For poor people in poor countries, life gets harder, as they must live on less as prices rise along with wages. For those in rich countries, prices fall and wages stagnate. Over time, wealth is eaten up and poverty is the result. Right liberalism also supports socialism, the levelling of the world by supporting mass immigration. They believe in the right of every person to live and work wherever they want. The free movement of labour. If a poor person leaves a poor country, then they have shown not only that they are better than other people, more enterprising, but by allowing them to immigrate to a richer country, it shows not only compassion, but a practical way of relieving poverty, at least to the right liberal mind. But mass immigration is socialism, a levelling of the distinction between two peoples and the transfer of money from one group to another. And the best part for the right liberal is that that transfer of money isn't at his expense, but at someone else's. It comes at the expense of the man who cannot get a job in his own country because that job is held by a foreigner, and it is paid for by his countrymen who must pay tax that support this policy. But the right liberal is hardly affected at all. If he is wealthy enough, he can move away from the problem or pay to protect himself from most of its effects. 
but those without that wealth have to live with the full effects. The risk is shared, the benefits are privatized. All socialism destroys wealth because it invests in unproductive enterprises, both economically and socially. Raise the living standard of poor countries by lowering the living standards of rich countries? That is classic socialism. <laughs>